Hello and welcome to another manga spotlight. This is Cosmos by Tomura Ryuhei. That name might seem familiar to some of you, and that is because this is by the same creator as Beelzebub, which was a awesome shonen series. I will say that it started off really great, didn't really stick the landing, but overall I did enjoy that series. And so when I heard that the uh, creator for that was going to do a new series, I had to check it out. And yeah, this is a weird sci-fi action shonen series. Let's just read the little premise right here. Kaede Mizumori, a high school student who can see through people's lies, lives a dry life so as not to make waves until he meets the mysterious schoolgirl Rin Hamura, a thin sci-fi alien drama. Uh, yeah, this is, anyone who's read Beelzebub, you'll know that Tamura's series can get really, really weird. And, uh, this kind of fits that. Not weird as some other mangakas can be. Yeah, so let's just jump right into it. So we start off with the dude being killed. And it basically talks about, like, the different percentages of what can kill you in life. So, like, the, the chance of getting hit by a meteor and dying is 1 in 1.6 million. The chance of dying in an earthquake is 1 in 130,000, and so on and so forth. And it basically talks about how there are these people that choose to gamble on these percentages. And these gamblers are called insurance. And so we cut to school where we see our main character. His name is Mizumori. And he has the ability to tell when people are lying. He can smell it. It's kind of weird because he says he smells it, but... When he sees people lying, there's like this black haze around them as well. So maybe that haze is just for us, the audience, so we can see, oh, he's smelling a lie. But anyways, he's able to smell lies. And because of that, he kind of pushes himself away from people. Because I guess he doesn't want to be involved with people who are constantly lying. As he's looking around his school, he mentions that like his classroom reeks because there's a lot of people lying. And so a lot of like people come up to him and they want to play games with him and stuff. Games like uh, Werewolf, which some of you might know as Mafia. If some of you play video games, you might know like the uh, Town of Salem, kind of like that. Uh, poker, anything that requires lying to like win or help you out, he tries to not play because he mentions that like at first it was fun, but then after a while it got kind of boring. And then also just it reeks. And he doesn't want to play games that reek, I guess. Uh, anyways, this girl named Hinakara shows up to him and asks if he can follow her to her boyfriend's house, Aizawa. And basically, Aizawa has been ignoring her and her calls. And she believes that Mizumori might be able to help him. Of course, he smells a lie. And he thinks, oh, the only reason why you want me to go is because if you bring another guy to your boyfriend's house... He might get jealous and then he won't be uh, distancing himself from you. But he's like, all right, whatever. So he goes and he follows her. And they go to Aizawa's apartment building where they see a bunch of shady looking dudes standing right outside of his door. And then, of course, they just kind of walk right past. And then they like turn the corner and they start freaking out. They're like, um, Mizumori's like, is that Aizawa's house? And she's like, yeah. And they're like, oh, God, like, who are these people? Why are they outside his building? Like, are these Yakuza? What did he get involved in? And then that's when they hear a bunch of screaming and pounding. And then all of a sudden, this girl shows up. She looks like a schoolgirl. And her name is Hamura Rin. I'm just going to call her Rin for convenience sake. And Rin basically says, hey, um, I need you to listen to what I have to say. Come follow me. And they're like, wait, what about the Yakuza looking dudes outside? And she's like, ah, oh, don't worry about them. They went home. And when they turn the corner, they realize that the Yakuza guys are gone. Which should kind of give you a hint that something is off about this girl. And um, she has a key to Aizawa's house. And she invites everybody in. And of course, Hinakawa is kind of like, why do you have a key to my boyfriend's house? How do you know him? How many times have you have you been here? And she's like, oh, this is my first time being here. And uh, the reason why I have his key is because he owes us money. And when they step into his house, they see what looks like a dead body of Aizawa. Only, like, he looks almost mummified. Like, he looks like he's just been drained of all his bodily fluids. And, of course, Hinakawa, like, freaks out. She runs outside, starts throwing up. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Mizumori is, like, freaking out. And he's going to, like, call the police when Rin tells him, Oh, you don't have to do that. He's not dead. 
he just uh this thing that you see right here is just his cast off skin and of course um he's more like what the hell is that what was the cast off skin and she basically explains that yeah it looks like he was shedding it's probably been about like 10 days since then uh he might have changed his face though so i wonder if we can still find him that's when she receives a phone call from her boss and she's trying to like explain the situation and her boss is kind of like harassing her it's supposed to be like comedic and um yeah she like slams the phone on her ground on the ground and starts stepping on it and um she basically says hey can i ask you a few questions mizumori and she explains herself like she says what her name is she says that she works for the milky way insurance and that she's an insurance investigator and she kind of info dumps or gives us an exposition about what the basic plot of the story is going to be and that's the fact that earth is uh, a planet that inhabits a bunch of aliens like a bunch of aliens like coming to earth and like living here or just taking vacations here and stuff like that and basically she works almost kind of like a man in black only rather than hunting down aliens it's more like insurance so they come here uh one of the biggest rules about being on earth is that you cannot use currency from your planet you have to use earth's currency so what she does is she works for, like I said, an insurance company where like they will give money to the aliens. Kind of, kind of like regular insurance companies. Coverage for cars, for houses, for whatever. And also, like aliens can take out loans from them. But obviously, you got to pay them back. And when they don't pay them back, that's when Rin gets involved and she shows up. Or, or like if an alien like has his spaceship stolen or something. That's where Rin gets involved in her, her and her people. And they're like, okay, let's check out uh, what went down. Let's see what your policy is like. And then we can reimburse to you. Or if you owe us money, I'm here. Now it's time to collect what you owe us plus the, ins um, the interest. And then if you don't, that's when you got problems. And Aizawa is an alien that came from another planet. And he owes $1.2 million to Rin's company. And that's why she's shown up. There's also the fact that apparently Aizawa might have murdered someone, which is a huge no-no. You're not allowed to murder other people when you're on Earth. And so, um, yeah, she's here to collect and also to like figure out, like to investigate the, the murder and what's going on and all this stuff. And of course, Mizumori is kind of like freaking out eternally because for the first time in his life, he can't tell when someone's lying to him like as far as he knows she's telling him the truth but obviously what she's telling him is just so far-fetched and out there that he's kind of doubting if his abilities are still working or not and then that's when a baseball flies through the window like a bullet and goes um like impacts the wall and they look across the street and they see like in the distance on top of a skyscraper is izawa and izawa is throwing baseballs but he's throwing them with such force that, I mean, if they were to hit anyone, they would, it would kill him easily. Mizumori calls Izawa's phone because they're friends and tells him, like, hey, like, what are you doing? Are you trying to kill me? And Zawa says, hey, um, get away from that girl. If you don't, I, my next ball is not going to miss you. And so uh, Izawa tries to explain, like, this girl's crazy. She's stalking me. Don't listen to her lies. Mizumori's like, are you an alien? And he's like, I guess so in terms of, like, my level of athletics like if you were to say like, like the way i throw a ball and stuff is way stronger than a normal person so you could say like i'm a monster in that regard but i'm not an alien from outer space and um he tells mizumori to hand over the phone to the girl and um basically they start having a conversation he's always like hey like you know if you take one step i'm gonna throw this ball at your head and kill you call your superior and Stop the, the the investigation. Like I don't know any depths to you. And Rin's like I destroyed my phone, so I can't call my my, my superior. And that's when he's all you know just snaps. He's like, all right, I've decided I'm gonna be collecting my depths from you. And um, I guess that means he's gonna like kill her. So as he's like chucking balls at her, uh, Mizumori decides to to run off and try to get to where Izawa's at. Because his ability to tell lies only works if he's near somebody. You can't tell if someone is lying over a phone call. And so as he's doing this, uh, he briefly overhears uh, Rin talking about how there was a skeleton discovered in a pond with a baseball-sized hole in his head. And it's the, the guy that you know was in the beginning. 
And he's always like, that has nothing to do with me. I'm not the one that, that murdered that dude. Um, Rin's not really believing him. And that's when Rin grabs a baseball bat and says, if you try to chuck a, another ball at me, I'm going to hit it right back at you. And he's always starts laughing. He's like, you know, like every time when I shed my skin, I grow stronger. And I've already shed my skin three times. So I, I'm really strong. There's no way you're going to be able to sue, hit a ball that I'm chucking at you at full speed. And she basically taunts him to do it. He's like, all right, I'm going to throw one at you right down the center. And he does. And she's able to whack it back at him. And it knocks him in the head. He collapses to the floor just as Mizumori shows up. And Mizumori basically asks him, like, hey, um, why did you do all this? And then we get the, the sympathy flashback. Where we see that Izawa grew up on this planet, which I guess has only a hundred inhabitants, and his father is always talking about Earth and about this great thing called baseball, and how there's like a tournament where uh, like thousands of schools will gather together, and he explains it as um, and fight until the death to find one winner. Obviously, they're not fighting to the death, but basically, um, they, they all these schools like gather together and they they participate. And only one person is like good enough to get onto a baseball team or something. I don't know. It's kind of glossed over. I don't really know the rules of this. I'm not the biggest baseball fan, nor do I know how J baseball works in Japan. But uh, basically, that's why he came to Earth. He just wanted to play uh, high school baseball. He didn't really care about anything else. He just really wanted to play high school baseball. He came to Earth, uh, and of course, he had to take out loans, and he has to pay those loans back. So... He decided to, you know, take uh, part-time jobs and stuff. But because he's an alien, things have um, sometimes go out of control. Like he chucks a ball way too fast and he injures a player. Or at work, uh, he caused like an accident that could have killed people. And so he, he's struggling to, to be on Earth, but he just really wants to live out this dream of being a high school baseball player. And uh, he asks Mizumori, like, why are you here? And that's when Mizumori explains, I have the ability to tell when someone's lying. But it only works when I'm right next to them. So that's why I'm here. And then he asks him, like, are you really an alien? He's always says, yeah. Did you come here to play Earth base? Did you come to Earth to play baseball? Yeah. Are you stupid? Yeah. <laughs> Did you really kill somebody? And he's always like, of course not. And that's when Mizumori's like, that wasn't a lie. And yeah, Rin eventually shows up. And she uh, hands over her phone back to Mizumori. And explains, um, you know, looks like, Izawa is going to be getting a liability insurance payouts. Like, we still have to determine the details of the incidents. And as for the murder, um, that's going to be transferred to her special office. And she's like, you can tell when someone's lying, right? Like, I overheard you uh, over the phone because I still had your phone when you were talking to Izawa and you guys were still on, on, on a call. Um, I need you to work for me because your ability to tell if someone is lying, like, it also works on aliens, not just humans. And when it comes to insurance and dealing with people who might cause insurance fraud and stuff like that, like that's a really great ability to be able to tell if someone's lying or not. And so that's how Mizumori ends up joining a uh, insurance company that works with aliens. And um, yeah, at the point of this recording, there's only two chapters, at least two chapters that have been translated by fans, in English anyways. Uh, I saw, I think on another website, there was like, five chapters in French or something that was already translated. So I believe there might actually only be five chapters at this point in time. I'm not sure. The, this series came out in April, April uh, 19th, and it comes out for, um, it's serialized in this publication called Sunday Gene X, which is a monthly release. So you think monthly release, April 19th, April, May, June, July, so maybe four chapters, four or five chapters have been released. The second one just came out today uh, in terms, again, of the English uh, translation. Hopefully the uh, Scanlation group that's working on the translation for this will uh, speed up a little bit. Um, but I will say they're doing a, a great job. The Because it's always it can always be really hit or miss when it comes to translations, uh, like fan translations when it comes to manga. Sometimes you'll get stuff where it's like direct... Like Google translation, like they use like a machine and you can tell because while it is in English, like the grammar is all over the place and it's just like really hard to read. There are some where it's like the, um, the, uh, like the redrawing, like they don't even bother redrawing. Uh, the typesetting is terrible. Like the font that they use for the dialogue and stuff is just awful. Like 
you can always get like just weird stuff like that. But the translation group for this series has been really good. Um, it's no time to scan late scans is the group and they've done a phenomenal job. Uh, like the, the grammar is like spot on. I haven't found any spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes. Uh, everything's like really clean. They even have someone who does like some of the redrawings uh, and it, it looks great. So yeah, they're doing a really good job. I don't want to sound like I'm like crapping on them because they're a bit behind. Because I mean, I, I rather have them take their time and like have good quality chapters come out than uh, have like another scanlation group like rush things, but it's just a huge mess. But um, yeah, I do hope that they pick things up a bit just because I, I really enjoy this series. I don't want to go through chapter two, but I will say chapter two, like for anyone who's like worried, like, oh, I kind of want more action stuff, especially since um, like Beelzebub, the, the other series by this mangaka was like a lot of, like it was very action heavy. Well, you, you get your action stuff in, I mean, you get them in here, but you also get them in chapter two. Um, I will say the action scenes are like awesomely drawn. The character of Mizumori is interesting. He's kind of very aloof, but not in a nothing phases him sort of way, but more in a he's not, how should I explain it? He's kind of like freaking out, but not freaking out as much as you would normally think from a, an anime or I should say a manga protagonist when like weird things are happening. Like he, he's just kind of like going with the flow of things a bit. And like there's like just like the comedy in here is pretty good. Like for example, there's a, a moment in chapter two where Rin introduces Mizumori to her superior and her superior his true alien form is Ultraman basically like he looks just like Ultraman a comparative of Ultraman and he even says his name is Ultra and he explains that um he's in love with Rin uh that they're lovers you can you know uh my name is Ultra and you can say that uh you know I'm her man you could call say that I'm Ultra man and then right before he says Ultraman she like smacks him and then she basically explains that that's a lie, like they're not lovers. And that's when Ultra says that he loves everybody, like he loves all the inhabitants of Earth. And then he turns to Mizumori, he's like, that even means you. And then he like winks at him, and then there's like a little heart. And then <laughs> Mizumori just like blank face is like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm not going to work for you guys. <laughs> um, so like you just get like kind of like comedy like that. Uh, but yeah, this... Again, it's only two chapters so far. At least two chapters have been translated. But they were they're awesome. And I mean, I, I trust Tamura when it comes to, to manga. Like I like I said, I did really enjoy BL's above. I do think that it got a little bit weaker later on. Um, but I mean the majority of that series is really good. And so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with this. And just the idea of like an alien insurance company because <laughs> usually like when it comes to like series where um you have like a group on earth dealing with aliens it's usually like a man in black kind of thing where it's like okay our, our job is just to police aliens that break the rules but it's like nah their job isn't really that their job is just like insurance but of course don't don't let that fool you into thinking oh well that means we're not going to get that much action right no no you do get a lot of action uh i mean we got a lot of action just two issues but yeah, this is great. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Go check it out. Cosmos. I'll leave a link to where you can read it down in the description below, like always. But it's a very fun series so far. Hopefully it continues to be that way. But um, yeah, I highly recommend it. Go check it out. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. So what did you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.